So I started off as pretty much a straight landscape painter and I did love the landscape and it was a great tool for learning how to paint but after a while I sort of got a little bit bored with it and realized that it wasn't really covering what was interesting to me because what's interesting to me is not so much the scene itself but the biology behind the scene and man's complicated relationship with that biology. So for a while I was kind of dissatisfied because I couldn't really figure out exactly what it was I was trying to say. And then one day I heard this story about a man named Fritz Haber and it all instantly fell into place. And the reason it so instantly fell into place was because this man's life was kind of a parable or a metaphor for something that is both good and bad and so complicated and something that can't be easily categorized, um, something that just affects the whole world. And it actually gave me goosebumps. So I'd like to t tell you a brief history of him so you can kind of see how it started this whole body of work. His name was Fritz Haber. In 1909, he won the Nobel Prize for fixing nitrogen from the air. And that was such a huge development because that enabled masses of humanity to be fed, something that had never been achieved before. It enabled the population to explode from 1.5 billion around the turn of the century to the 7 billion that we have today. Caused a whole host of good things and caused a whole host of bad things. The same man also created cyanide gas, he created mustard gas, his institute ended up coming up with Zyklon A, which the Nazis later turned into Zyklon B, which was the killing gas of the Jews. And this man was Jewish. So his story spawned this whole body of work because his story is both good and bad. And this work is about the complicated state of evolution that we have reached uh, as a species on this planet. Um, this piece here is called The Haber Process and it just shows growth, 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 because that's what the Haber process was about. And there's no tension in this piece. It's glowing, it's hopeful, it's happy, it, because that's what it was. Nobody knew the downside of that process. This piece is called 100 Million Tons, both because it's huge, but also because that is the amount of synthetic fertilizer that's produced every year in the world a hundred million tons. In fact, they estimate that half of the nitrogen in your body has been through the Haber process. And this piece is uh, beautiful. It, it shows lush growth. It's all positive. There's no tension in the piece. You can see the sunlight coming through because it was kind of seen as a miracle. It was sort of like a cure-all at the time. Just like with everything in life, you don't know what the consequences are till later. And in this piece, I'm just trying to capture that wonderful feeling of hope and the bounty created by this process. So when the Haber process was invented, they called it bread from the air because it was like a miracle. You take the atmosphere, you do this process to it, and you get fertilizer, which makes your wheat grow. So they called it bread from the air, and this piece is called bread from the air. And this piece is still very beautiful and positive and it shows the atmosphere behind it so you know that it's something to do with the earth and growth. You can see the lush growth, but there's also a little bit of dissolution. There are some effects, some effects starting to happen, which maybe aren't really that visible yet. They're kind of in the background, dripping down dissolution effects. And in a lot of the pieces that followed that first painting, I show both dissolution and struggle but also the beauty, the beauty of nature, its adaptive power, its, its ability to find a way to grow and to continue growing. And I show light and positivity and just kind of like a, a, a good overall picture. I want to show effects, but it's not completely dismal. So this painting is called Riot of Survival. 
and when you look at it you could be looking at water you could be looking at microbiology you could be looking at cells and I painted it kind of on this glowing amorphous background so on the one hand it could look kind of menacing and scary it could be pictures of a virus or something but on the other hand I think that it still maintains a sense of potential or life or the mysteries of life and I think that that really ties in with the overall theme of my paintings now so some of the other paintings that kind of explore this part of the series also show that uh, ambiguous either good or bad but maybe trying to capture a big sense of potential because there is so much potential in where we are as a species right now I have one called computational electronic device and I named it that because the scientists who work on these kinds of things they're not thinking I'm tinkering with thousands of years of uh, DNA evolution. They're, they're doing engineering. They're working on a computational electronic device. So I just try to capture in these pieces the beauty, the potential, and the kind of mysteriousness and maybe a little bit of uneasiness that comes along with the territory. These pieces in this series kind of evolved because I was working on so many drips and then I sort of started controlling the direction of the drips and some accidents happen and instead of thinking oh no that's not where I wanted the drip to go I kind of saw how it really was incorporated itself into the theme and that seemed so much more to describe the effect of man or man's influence than just the straight up and down drips that I had been doing before and in fact this kind of reminded me of urban streets the linear quality of it and that linear quality is in a lot of these pieces in this sub-series. In this piece here I have the same kind of angular drips and this sort of the, the angular drips represent the humanity and this maybe represents the biology. This is called tech bomb and this has sort of pushed out that. These two areas are immiscible with one another. So the lines in a lot of these pieces are just because they're dripped, but they are wildly intersecting. And that, that reflects how, how it is. All these wildly intersecting effects and causes and, and interrelationships. It's just such a complicated world. And I like the way the lines on these all sort of reflect that sort of haphazard, but kind of organized. And some lines kind of going in the same direction, but kind of random. And I like the effect of, um, busyness and intricacy and chaos that it makes these pieces have because that is kind of an aspect of our life here on this planet at this time. So when you look at these pieces up close you just see a complete mess, complete degradation, drips, haphazard application of paint, but they're very large and when you stand up and stand back and look at the macro picture they're really beautiful landscapes but the parts that kind of look like tree trunks are made again by drips, random drips and then what looks like foliage has just been blobbed on top and they are representative of fractured landscapes sometimes the background color is in the foreground and the foreground color is in the background and they're kind of mixed up and dissolving and falling apart but overall still working, still functioning, and very beautiful. This piece is called the second law, which refers to the second law of thermodynamics, meaning in a closed system, entropy doesn't decrease, meaning the universe tends towards disorder. I have a number of these because they're really fun to do, because every time you randomly throw paint up there and make a drip, it makes it look so completely different than the others. So even if you're kind of repeating the same painting, it comes out in a totally new way and it really so accurately describes what I'm trying to paint because from far away they look like beautiful functional landscapes just like our planet still looks like a beautiful functional planet but when you get up close you see that it's really falling apart the details and the basis the basic structure is falling apart with the drips and the blobs and you know kind of the dissolution that's going on in the paint film itself
So the macro view of this whole situation led me to look at the images of the Earth from space, the big blue marble. And when you see the Earth from space, you see some brown, you see the continents with green on them, you see some white clouds. And if I imagine that globe spinning faster or spinning off course or shaking a little bit, um, you come up with these images that kind of show a loss of integrity but are still reminiscent of the sphere or the big blue marble from Earth. And I like that feeling. I like how some of these images just look like the world is spinning faster than it used to. And then that kind of brought me to these big blue marbles but that are, cons that are covered in white. And actually, under this specific piece and under all of them, there, there was a dripped image of the big blue marble of the Earth. And then slowly, layer by layer, uh, I covered it in rectilinear drips of white paint. So you can see the colors of the planet, beautiful colors, golds and blue and ocean color and continent color. They're all under here. And actually under here it is a big globe, but it's been shrouded by this nice, clear, clean, well-intentioned white. White is seen as pure and beautiful and full of potential and white is the color of goodness and so are so many of the changes that we make in our world. They are good changes and good things happen and well, there are so many people trying to do good. So I have these series of images of the big blue marble obliterated by white. So I don't really want this work to be seen as um, a value judgment, not positive or negative. It's not the judgment of whether it's good or bad that is interesting to me is just the state of affairs and the interrelationships. And I want um, people to look at it and say, yeah, that is how it feels to be a, a, a member of this planet at this point in time. I feel just the same way, I get that, um, without turning it into an issue. I don't want it to be issue-based art. I just want it to be stating how it is right now at this complicated point in our evolution.